Hi, this is Tyler Conradi, uh, and this is my Module 5 assignment. And I chose the topic of safety in the classroom. And I think it's one that's very important for, for teachers um, when they're especially getting started out and making sure that their students are, are going to be able to, to do the things they want to throughout the year. Um, first of all, the three journal articles that I chose um, have to do with this topic, and they basically they they talked about students not feeling safe in the in the school or in the classroom itself, and the problems that can can take place because of that. Um, these these articles all said that in order for the students to do well in school and to want to um, actually prosper and and see a future for themselves, they have to feel safe. And if they don't, you won't be able to get them to do it, what um, they're supposed to in, in, in school. And it's the teacher's job to make that happen. You have to go out of your way to learn about the kids and show them that you care. And many teachers will just demand respect um, from the students without actually... I mean, I, I, I think the students need to need to show you respect as a teacher, but in some ways the teachers have to be able to earn it first as well. I think there's a little give and take there for both. And some teachers just don't get that. And I personally take pride in the relationships that I have with my students. I make sure that I, I learn about them. I try to, to show them that I care. And if, if that takes place, then, then they're going to they're going to want to do what I what I ask of them in that sense, and by doing so, there's a sense of respect that's given from both sides of the aisle, from me to them, and from them from them in return back to me as well, and it just makes your classroom a whole lot nicer and safer and, and much more enjoyable. In a couple of these chapters, um, we had a couple different leadership approaches that they talked about, and the one that kind of hit home with me was the psychodynamic approach um, that was talked about in chapter 13. Um, and it said that it starts at the roots of the individual family for the leaders themselves. And my individual family that I've had, my, I had two great parents that raised me, I had a really strong family upbringing, everything was, was great. I had, I mean, I've had have um, a younger brother and younger sister as well and my parents did a, a very very good job they were very loving to us but they were also very pretty strict and fair with us as well and made sure we towed the line and if we didn't there were consequences for it um, they instilled in us really strong self-worth um, and they told us how to work hard taught us the ways ways to do that and and we took pride in in our family five of us plus our extended family as well which I have, I have a huge extended family so um, and I feel like my personality and my leadership style has derived itself from the way my parents have raised me I like to think I have a good mixture of both parents in me um, both loving and respectful toward other people but very I mean if things need to get done you gotta be responsible and get it done don't blame other people to get it done. You do it yourself and stand up for what's right if, if uh, need be. Um, something also that that psychodynamic approach talked about was it said right in the book that an, um, this psychodynamic approach is a way to look at the relationship between the leader and the follower. And I think the teachers and the administrators have to show the students that they care about them. It's going to have a good relationship between the leaders and the followers, in this case, the teacher and administrators, and then the followers being the students, if the students know you care. And you also have to, right up front, lay out the boundaries, make sure that, that they know exactly what's expected of them, and in return, they're going to, to respect you for that. But you also have to remain consistent in what you do. If you handle the situation differently one day than you do the next day, then the kids aren't going to know what's going on and they're not going to know how to react to certain things that you do. 
have to lay boundaries and re remain consistent in your activities. And the students will show the leaders respect and follow their lead if all of those things are followed, and I think, I think they will. The three articles that I um, talked about, I'm just going to kind of lay out just little pieces of each of the three. And in the social emotional needs article, um, there were a couple quotes that I saw. Number one, it said, studies routinely show that students learn better when they feel safe. And number two, more adults visible and talking to students in the hallway, the more that you see, it's the mark of a, of a climate with better adult-student relationships. Both of those two statements aren't necessarily, like I said, aren't groundbreaking information and aren't things that people probably don't already know, but it's something that has to happen in our schools. Um, the first one, it says students routinely show that they, or studies routinely show that students learn better when they feel safe. It just makes sense. Okay. I put a picture here of a police officer in a, in a school. It also mentioned in that study that, or in that article, that not necessarily um, metal detectors and police officers and things, those things don't necessarily allow the students to feel safer. In some cases, it may actually make them feel more tense and, and on edge. But the second part of that, the second quote there, it says having more just teachers and administrators and adults in the hallways and talking to them, communicating with them, making them feel safer about their situation, about their school, that's what's really going to have an impact on them. And I, I think that's absolutely correct. The more, the more eyes of adults you have out in the hallways and, and seeing and talking to these students, the better they're going to feel and the more they're going to produce in school. A second article um, that I read is the I Keep Me Safe article, and it also mentioned a couple things that I'm going to talk about here. Number one, if a child worries that he is not safe or thinks that the world is out to get them, growing up becomes a gauntlet. And number two, when growing up in the context of fear, it makes children less likely to give new people or situations the benefit of the doubt. First and foremost, if the child is having problems at home or if they've grown up fearful and they're not they're just not going to trust anybody number one they have to feel protected and safe their personal safety is number one to them and if that's not taken care of they're not going to do anything else they have to feel safe and they have to make sure that themselves are, are protected and taken care of and if they're worried about that all the time they're not going to do anything in the classroom and they're not going to get anything done and none of their schoolwork is is going to going to be anything that's that's worthwhile and all of these the, the teachers have to make their situations whether that be in, in the hallway or in the classroom it has to be enjoyable and safe and and allow those students to prosper in it if that doesn't happen it won't matter what you do from that point forward and then the final journal article that I read, um, and it was Students' Perceptions of Unsafe Schools article. Um, it states that we found that students who were older, male, and poor had increased risks of perceiving higher levels of unsafe school environments. And I, I, I agree with this too, seeing some of the students that I, I deal with here at my school. Um, we don't have a huge diversity of students in our school, but there are some different levels of, of uh, socioeconomic statuses of students, and that has an effect on on the safety aspect of it. Um, these students, if they are poorer and and male, a lot of times a little bit older and like sophomore, juniors, and seniors, um, they're a lot more aware of their surroundings because. A lot of their family life is maybe living paycheck, paycheck to paycheck, so they have to know exactly what's going on. Um, they're a lot more protective of themselves and, and their siblings, and, and because they've had to, they had to be in their family life. That's just their their natural way of life, and they see life a little bit differently than other students do, with maybe a little bit more money, because they had to be focused on the way that that their life is going, and they carry that into the school. And so 
it's our job as teachers to make sure that those students in particular are felt they, they feel safe and they're they're going to be well taken care of that way they're able to perform well in school too and um, this last piece just kind of summarizes what I've been talking about um, we as leaders here need to get to know the students personally we have to know what their family life is like we have to know what their their home lives are um, what their situations are in, in outside of our building that way when they come into our building when they bring those things to us and they bring that part of their lives into the building we have to know how to react to it have to learn their abilities not only um, in the classroom but their abilities outside of it as well and their struggles that they face because that's only going to help us learn what type of people they are and, and how we're going to be able to relate to them well. And by doing all of that, um, we're going to end up gaining trust from them and gain respect from them as well. They have to know that we care about them. If they just think that we're there just to gain a paycheck and don't care about their well-being, then they're not going to want to do anything for us. They're not going to want to work hard. They're not going to want to pay attention in class. And if we don't have their best interests at heart, then they're not going to want to work hard. And they will follow our leadership if they feel safe and trust our motives and trust that we have their best interests at heart. If we don't, it won't matter. That has to be first and foremost, right at the beginning. And nothing else matters after that. These are my three journal articles and the, the uh, bibliography page that went along with them. And I hope you've enjoyed my presentation and talk to you later. Thank you.